and welcome to Natural Narrative's very first online YouTube class. And what we're going to learn today is how to make beeswax candles. Now, why would I want to make beeswax candles as opposed to just buying regular old candles? Well, regular candles are made from paraffin, which is a petroleum product. So when they are made, they are producing toxins in the environment and even when we burn them we are actually getting six eight i don't know lots of different toxins are being burned when you burn your regular candle which is really upsetting because to me if i burn a candle the whole idea is to have a lovely ambiance in my home and i want that to feel natural and i want it to feel healthy so i choose to make beeswax candles so what are we going to need to make beeswax candles you're going to need a chunk of beeswax mmm beeswax smells good have you ever smelled this holy this smells really good my guess is you probably have smelled it if you want to make beeswax candles it kind of smells I guess like honey you know that beeswax is a byproduct of the honey making process with the bees I actually got my beeswax from a local apiary Eagle Creek apiary and they sell it at their farmers market so if you have a local Farmer's Market, someone who's uh, who's making honey, ask if they have beeswax. That'll be your best uh, source. But you can also get it maybe like at Walmart. I don't know if Walmart has it. But you can get it at uh, Michael's, I'm pretty sure. Or you can get it online. But you want to use all natural beeswax with no net additives whatsoever. And all we have to do is melt it down. We don't want to add anything to it. Um, other problems with regular candles is they add fragrances which smell really, really nice. But again, they're toxic, so who would have known that? But they are. So you want to have no fragrances. You could add essential oils. Those are not toxic. But anything, even natural fragrances, steer clear of those. They're actually not good for you. So you're going to need beeswax, and you're going to need to melt that down. And then you're going to need a jar, a glass jar, and you're going to need some type of wick. So. I found these amazing wooden wicks. Can you see that? It's, it's real flexible, it's real thin, and it's made out of wood. So when you burn it, it kind of crinkles. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm sure you can't, I can barely hear it. No ambient noise or you won't be able to hear the crinkle, but you can, it can you know, as it burns. And also, obviously it's wood, so it's just freaking cool. It reminds you of a fireplace. So you got your jar. I get jars, um, I just save like cool jars. This was a jelly jar. Um, and you wanna make sure that the top of whatever jar you use is wide enough where you can light the candle, where you can blow it out, where you can trim your wick. Um, so this is, this is a really ideal jar. So you just have to take your wick, and of course you can use cloth wicks, but I'm gonna use these wooden wicks. And you just need to center it. These are the large ones, by the way. They are large and small, at least. I got these at Michael's. At Michael's there's large and small. Large is probably best for all, unless you're making really, really teeny tiny candles. Um, this jar is, I don't know, maybe two inches tall, maybe an inch and a half diameter across the top at that point. Um, this will be a perfect wick for it, the large one. So I'm gonna take, I have no idea what this stuff is called. It's like goopy, sticky stuff. <laughs> you use it to put like posters on your wall. Do you know what this is? I don't know what it's called, but I've had it for a long time and you can pull a piece off and then you just kind of manipulate it a little bit, kind of get it warm with your fingers and it's sticky. So you're just gonna stick your wick into that sticky stuff that I don't know what it's called. And then you're gonna center it in your jar as well as you can. Just push it in there. And the cool, the other cool thing, one of the other cool things about these wooden wicks is it's just gonna stand right there. Like a, a cloth wick, you know, I'd have to hold it, I'd have to center it, but this is just gonna, you know, it stands by itself. So that's pretty cool. So after you've melted your wax down in a double boiler, and I've used this container because um, I used to use these, this, um, which works great. And if this is all you have, this will work great for you. But when you pull it out, you have to make sure that you use a pot holder or something so you don't burn your hands because, of course, it's going to get really hot. Where this one, this one has a handle and a spout. This has a handle and a spout <laughs> where this has neither of those. So it makes it really nice. Um, for pouring candles. I wouldn't necessarily buy one of these, but if you're going to be using beeswax with any kind of regularity, you might want to get it. I think it was about 20 bucks. So 
I've already double boiled. You, you obviously you put water in your pot. You're gonna double boil it. I've already done that part. And once um, once it liquefies completely, I used about a pound of wax, and it took about. I'm gonna say maybe 15 minutes. And of course you wanna watch it as it boils, make sure the water isn't splashing up into the top or that it falls over or anything like that. But once it boils, com once it completely liquefies, then you're ready to pour your candles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour a little bit at the bottom. That way I can kind of anchor the wick, but I'm not gonna wait real long cause you don't wanna have like um, obvious breaks in the wax. So. All I'm going to do is just kind of hold this and pour a little bit of the beeswax in the bottom and then I'm just going to wait a second because it's going to harden pretty quickly. It's not going to harden completely but it's going to harden enough where I don't have to hold on to it. And then I'm just going to nice steady stream all the way up to as close to the top as I want it. And I'm gonna go about right there. Okay, now I just have to wait for it to cool. It's gonna take, oh, I don't know. Um, I notice, of course, my wick isn't completely centered, but that's okay, it is what it is. Here's one that I pour, poured about an hour ago. So I wanna show you, it's important with the, um, wooden wicks it's actually very important that you trim it very close to the candle especially the first time if you don't um the wick may never burn correctly but if you do you won't ever have a problem with it either so you have to you really want to do it about a quarter inch which is really hard to do even with a wick trimmer so this is a wick trimmer that i got but it has a kind of a bottom piece on it so I kind of have to go at an angle but I want to get that wick as close to the wax as I possibly can without obviously going down into it so I'm just going to take this this is just a regular wick trimmer it's not particular for the wooden wick but that's what I'm using and I'm just going to cut it and that's what it looks like can you see it can you see it so when this one cools off enough I will do that and then I will light it, and then I will have these lovely beeswax candles burning in my home, getting rid of the dog smell, <laughs> and just making a nice, wonderful, natural, healthy way of enjoying my evenings and my days. Thank you for watching. I hope that if you like the video, you give me a thumbs up, and if there's anybody you'd like to share it with, please be nice, be nice. it's my very first video, uh, but I will learn as I go, and I'm having fun. I hope that it was fun for you too, and that maybe you learned something. Thank you so much.